Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. There are two things out there that really gets people's bloods boiling and emotions to run very high. Those two things are politics and sports. If you want to start an argument, if you want to see people go back and forth with each other and really create some contentious situations, start talking about politics or start talking about sports. These things, for whatever reason, tend to get people going, right? It's just the way that it is. And whenever you bring those two things together, I'm talking about politics and sports, it creates fireworks. That's just the way that it is, for better or for worse. That's what the reality is. We all know that the relationship between the media and players can sometimes be bittersweet because players need the media to talk about them and the media needs to talk about the players so people can watch them and they can make their money off and advertise. And so it's a symbiotic uh, relationship and it's beneficial to all parties. But sometimes certain parties go overboard. Certain parties go overboard. And that's why I think it's very important that no matter the message you're trying to get across, you have to make sure you try to do it with tact and you try not to insult people and try not to go overboard. Now, there are people out there that simply disagree with this with this position that I have, but this is my position because I think it, it opens up the door for too many bad things to happen. And sometimes, to be fair, sometimes, you know, the media goes at players and sometimes the players go at media and I uh, go at the media. And I think this particular situation that we're going to get into that get into today, I think is the latest example of this, because essentially ever since Russell Westbrook joined uh, the Lakers, there's kind of been this Skip Bayless, Russell Westbrook saga on TV. We all know that whenever Russell Westbrook comes out there and plays poorly, Skip Bayless puts together a blooper reel of uh, Russell Westbrook. And it's usually hilarious. Even Shannon Sharp, his co-host, is on there laughing about it and all of these different things. But there's one particular thing that Skip Bayless does that I think is rub, uh, that rubs some people the wrong way. And that thing is he always makes fun of his last name. Instead of calling him Russell Westbrook, he calls him Russell West Brick. And now it seems as if that one person has finally taken some major exception to this. And that person is Russell Westbrook's wife, who went on Twitter, I believe it was yesterday, to, exp to express her displeasure uh, with Skip Bayless. So let me just quickly get into her, uh, her tweet. She said, and this tweet was on March 4th. She said, I am tired of you, the real Skip Bayless, calling my husband out of his name. It's extremely childish. That is my name as well, and many other people's names. You're disrespectful, and I'm extremely offended by your behavior. You should apologize. So those were her comments, and apparently um, Skip Bayless actually blocked her on Twitter, right? Now, let me quickly say this before we get into her, her, her um, break down her tweets. This is not the first time that this has happened with Skip Bayless. Why do I say this? If any of you guys remember Chris Bosh, who I believe is in the Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken, Chris Bosh, the, the former Miami Heat, actually used to be a Toronto Raptor, then uh, became Miami Heat, won two championships with Dwayne Wade and um, and uh, LeBron James. And during that time when that big three were playing together, I think that team was together for four years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Chris Bosh was usually the guy that whenever you wanted to point, with him and Mario Chalmers, but whenever you wanted to point blame at the big three, it was usually Chris Bosh that you wanted to point the blame at because Chris Bosh kind of had a finesse game. He was a jump shooter. Um, you know, he used to stretch the floor. He was really good on the pick and pop. And for whatever reason, um, whenever things wouldn't go well, Skip Bayless would criticize him and then he would call him Bosh Spice. You know, and it was he was referring to the Spice Girls. So he would call him Bosh Spice. And it was something that really bothered Chris Bosh to the point where Chris Bosh actually made an appearance on ESPN First Take. You guys can go out there and hunt down the video. The, the video is out there. And basically, he confronted him about the whole thing about making fun of his last name. And he said, listen, if you want to criticize me, have at it. Have at it. But once you start making fun of my last name, I find it to be very disrespectful because you're making fun of not just me, but you're making fun of my family members. And there are a lot of people out there um that um take exception to what you're doing and i think this is exactly what's happening here again with russell westbrook and in this case his wife standing up for him and basically confronting skip bayless about this because essentially what she's saying is that listen you can criticize the guy no problem but now you're making fun of his last name i bear his last name his children bear his last name 
his family, his mom, his dad, his cousins, whoever it is, the Westbrooks, all of these people bear his last name. And I'm assuming she's saying you can criticize the guy, but I think you're going a little bit overboard. I think this is a little bit unnecessary. And to her point, I agree. I agree. But this is not the first time that this has caused problems in the sports world and the media world. If you think of Stephen A. Smith, Stephen A. Smith has also found himself in you know, similar situations. Think about the situation with Kwame Brown. Yes, we knew that he didn't think Kwame Brown was a great player. We got it. But there were moments in which uh, Stephen A. Smith would purposefully mispronounce, mispronounce Kwame Brown's name. Kwame Brown. He would do all of these different things. And I think Kwame Brown took exception to that. It causes people to build, it, it causes these people that you're, that you're talking about to build up resentment in their hearts against you. It's one of the reasons Stephen A. Smith also got in trouble when he was making fun of the, those Nigerian American uh, basketball players, right? The Nigerian players' names. He got into trouble for that. And I think the lesson here is this: is that you got to be careful how you talk about people. I'm talking about people in media now. You got to be careful with that because the minute you start making fun of people and you start making fun of them, you open up a door to a whole different animal that you don't want. It's one of the reasons we don't swear in our channel. I know, first of all, to, to swear is the easiest thing to do. It takes no brain power. To, like, I mean, even a three-year-old, five-year-old kid can swear. So there's nothing, there's nothing you know, fantastic about it. But one of the reasons we don't do this is because the minute you start swearing and you're talking about athletes and people and all, it opens up the door for all type of bad energy that you don't want. It really does. Now, there's some people that love it, that welcome it, more power to you, right? We're not dry to, I don't, we don't, I don't need any of that energy, like, you know, keep all of that stuff over there because we're not really interested in that. So we try our best to not insult people. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, we get it wrong because no one is perfect. Maybe, maybe there's some people out there that say, hey, I don't like what you said about this guy. I don't like what you said about that guy, whatever it is. But we try not to insult people flat out and really go at them at a, at a deeper level. And I think that's, where Russell Westbrook's wife is taking exception. Now, in my personal opinion, do I think she's going to get the apology that she's looking for? Hell no. I don't think Skip Bayless is going to apologize to her just because she asked for one. Maybe if it's one of his, you know, his bosses or something that, like that said, hey, wait a minute, you went a little bit too far, then you'll see an apology. Similarly to the situation that you had with Stephen A. Smith when he made the comments about Shoei Otani and those Nigerian players and he came on TV the following day and he... You know, he he apologized for what he said, but I, but I believe that he was pressured uh, into making that apology. But um, for, for what she's saying, I agree. When you start making fun of these people's last names, it's a big deal to some people. Maybe you may not take your last name very seriously. Maybe you may not feel a sense of heritage and connection to your past uh, with your last name. But there are other people that don't joke around with that. There are other people that have a very strong connection to their heritage and they're not going to take it lying down. They're going to take major exception to it. And they're going to come at you, uh, come at you. So to me, um, I think this is a nuanced conversation because sports, again, sports is, you know, you know, it's, it's a lightning rod for emotions, right? Emotions are always going to run high and people are always going to say whatever they want to say. And it's really hard to curtail people what they want to say. But to me, I think she's opening a very important discussion. So the question really to the audience here is, number one, what do you think about the comments that Russell Westbrook's wife made? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think she has a point? Do you think she has a gripe? And number two. Do you think uh, Skip Bayless should stop or do you think that Skip Bayless should continue to express himself however he feels because this is right and he can do whatever, do whatever the hell he wants? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We catch you guys on the next episode.